Hey guys, this is Vanimax Man here, and uh, welcome to part two of the NEC Super Beta High Fly machine. And uh, this is the VCN65EU is the model number, and it is one of my favorite beta VCRs that NEC made. So what I've done here is I'm showing you the real table motor that came out of the machine. Now I thought that replacing capacitors would restore function to the idler motor and it did not. And so the second thing that I thought of was probably the Hall effect sensor has failed in the, in the, on the idler motor and that is true the idler uh, has failed because of the Hall effect sensor that has went bad so basically what I've done is replaced the real table motor with a different one uh, the one that I put in there now has a good working idler motor and so we should now be able to play rewind and fast forward so let's see if me replacing instead of replacing the idler motor I just replace the whole entire real motors because I have a beta hi-fi parts deck I have a parts 70 EU a VCN 70 EU beta hi fi part stack that was an NEC. I've got it in the in the other machine, so we're gonna see if we're getting uh, playback now, and then most importantly, we want to see if we got our rewind, and then we're gonna test out the fast forward, and we'll see if that worked. So let's see if I'm right. Let's get the machine back up on the bench here we'll plug it in and we'll test it out okay so let's just see if we have our functions so another problem we're gonna have is I'm gonna have to figure out why the switch is not activating when the threading cycle is complete oh, power it on also another thing I wanted to know the reason why the cassette housing wasn't working very well let's turn off the static the reason why the cassette housing wasn't working very well you see I did replace the belt but it was still slipping and having problems well one of the things that was causing it I accidentally got oil dripped onto the belt and so the oil was causing it to slip so that was why the cassette housing wasn't working there was actually nothing wrong with the cassette housing it just like I said when I put that new belt on and then I was doing the servicing of the real table motor and I spilled oil and it dropped some drops onto the belt that was causing the belt to slip oil and belts don't work right <laughs> they don't like each other so now that that's remedied we'll show you and we'll see if this thing will now play and rewind and fast forward so let's go ahead and power it back on and let's go ahead and push in the cassette and you'll notice that it's now taking in the cassette now it wants to unthread so we have to figure out why that switch is not engaging so that's going to be the second thing we're going to take a look at here in just a minute but let's get it so that it'll thread so I'm going to actually manually uh, push the switch there we go now we can get it to uh, engage play so let's just try rewind I would say we have a success there 
it is rewinding just fine. And if you look at the counter, you can see the counter is moving. Alright, so let's try fast forward. Okay, it does see it see it fast forwards good now. Play. Well, we got playback. We have a servo problem, but we do have playback. And let's try adjusting the tracking and see if we can get the picture to come back here. No, nope. we still got we got a servo problem, but I think this is a this is a drum servo issue. I think so. It could be that those capacitors are failing on the drum motor circuit board. I don't think it's a problem with the servo circuitry itself. I think it might just be the capacitors have failed on the video head motor uh, circuit board. So I think that's what's causing it. Now I'm gonna let this machine warm up a little and we'll see if, uh, if it kinda comes back to life. But at least now so let's see if we've got picture search. Let's go fast forward. So we got that. Okay, let's go ahead and do rewind. And we have picture search and rewind. I'm going to make sure there's no tape tension issue. I'm just going to pull back on the tensioner and see if our problem goes away. So, the tensioner is fine, I think. Yeah, so if I remove the... So the tape tension is fine, it's just... Tape tension is okay. So, we definitely got a drum problem. Let's put it on to linear monaural sound. So now that we do that, we can hear the sound is clear. What we're getting is uh, a drum servo issue. The servo, um, if the, the head drum is not running um, at the right speed, it'll cause problems. But I do hear just a slight problem with the motor itself. Um, the head drum seems to be turning and then stopping for a brief second or half second and then it starts and then it stops for about a half second starts again and that's what's causing our uh, jumping effect it could be um, something in the pulse generator as well so now let's I think now you'll notice that you can hear that jumping around, right? Well, if we put it on monaural, you can hear the audio without any issues. And uh, that tells me that the captain servo is fine. It's the drum servo. Now, this is recorded in hi-fi stereo. Hi-fi stereo has been recorded with the video heads. So the video head will actually record the hi-fi audio. And if the video head is not working correctly, it can cause uh, the type of symptom that we're seeing here. See, I can hear just fine. So, the servo, the drum, the drum is starting and stopping and then starting and stopping. So that's that. That's what's going on here. Um, we'll we'll let it warm up a little bit and see if that servo problem goes away. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with the fact that we now have playback. 
we have rewind and we have fast forward again so um well i don't think fast forward was that much of an issue i think it was mainly rewind and and it was able to play but but it wasn't the tape wasn't going back into the cassette so the take up reel wasn't turning and so the tape would start spewing out and the take up reel wasn't putting it back in the cassette so it would go into automatic shut off it would shut down well now we hit play and we can actually hear and see that it's playing so we can now and we have rewind we have fast forward and we have play so but we do have a servo problem we gotta fix but let's go ahead and get this one step at a time so let's figure out why the switch is not working okay when this thing completes its thread cycle so the single thread up right and when this switch over here gets pressed that tells the machine it's finished its loading cycle and it can engage play or rewind or fast forward or whatever mode you want that's coming from like the tuner but let's go ahead and put in this gear here this you can see this is a spring loaded um, gear that basically presses up against the switch and what I'm seeing here is there is the switch is not making contact it's not pulling the switch in far enough to make contact so let's observe it one more time we'll observe what's going on it threads this piece here flings over and then it wants to eject so that's pushing the switch in switch is not going in far enough so we do know that and unless I, if i give it a little help like if we load it here and i'll give it a little help and now we we can engage play or rewind or fast forward or whatever we want to engage so the tracking knob has no effect on the on the machine as far as tracking so we might have the control track still might be a little bit dirty it might be the control track that's dirty and that could be causing that so let's go ahead and uh see why our switch ain't working and i'm just going to show you one more time on uh what's going on with it where the switch is not fully being engaged it's not being fully pressed take a look at my finger here and you'll notice that it moves over but not far enough to engage the switch so that it will complete the cycle of course it's not going in far enough so let me figure out what's going on okay so here's one of the things that i have kind of forgotten about there's an adjustment on the switch so i can loosen the screw and i can adjust the switch to where it'll fully engage so what I'll have to do is loosen the screw. We'll move the switch because this switch, this will loosen this screw here on the switch, and it'll allow that switch to move whatever direction that we need it to. So let's go ahead and loosen it up. Now typically, this is set from the factory, 
and it's got a dot of it, or it had a dot of glue of uh, paint that the factory put a dot of paint on the screw. I've loosened up the screw, so now I can actually physically move the switch forward, or I can move it back. I can, you can see now that I can swivel and move the switch to whatever position needed. So I'm going to put it right about there and we'll tighten the screw up and we'll see if we've put it in the right spot so that it'll engage. So let's just, okay, I'm gonna need two hands because it's moving on me. So let me um, do that and we'll see if we can get this switch to fully engage. Let's power off the machine. Um, yeah, I want to engage this, just move this switch just enough to where it'll, when it does press, it'll fully press on the switch and, and that will activate the completing the loading cycle. Okay, let's just see if my adjustments are correct. You may have to play with the switch a little bit until you get it into the right spot. But I've got it to where it's just barely, it's just barely, the switch is just barely starting to go in. So I adjusted it to where it just barely starts to push on the switch. And then that means it's close enough to where this thing should activate once it's loaded here. So let's go ahead and oh, turn it on. And now you can see that the switch is now been activated. So we've got it in the right spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it one more time. All right, let's test it once more. And that should allow us to... And you see now the switch is engaging by itself. So I'm gonna lock that. I've tightened the screw down, but I haven't tightened it all the way. So let me tighten that screw down all the way now that we know we got the switch in the right spot, so it's in the sweet spot. So I call it the sweet spot because that's the spot it needs so that it gets fully pressed when the tape threading cycle is complete. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use two hands again and we're going to tighten this uh, screw here. Okay, so we've got it all tightened down and let's just... Uh, Make sure that the switch is still in the same spot because it moved just a hair when I was tightening it. Now we can hit play. It's playing good now. Um, okay, it's went back to having servo issues. I'm so happy that now I can actually put it in and it'll engage on its own. We still have to fix the drum uh, speed problem. Oh, this is funny. This is when they're... I don't want to show too much. I don't want to get hit with the copyright, but... This is funny because he's starting to talk about... He's spilling his guts, basically. Let's put it on normal. I'm sorry, 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 I'
Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, you know, the hi-fi stereo is having trouble is what it is. And it's because of the, the drum starting and stopping. If we mute the volume and just take a listen and you can hear the drum starting and stopping I don't know if you can hear it but I can because I've got a trained a trained ear as they say now it's starting to clear up a little so I'm definitely thinking capacitors because it seems like it's warming up and it's starting to get a little bit better as far as the servo goes. So at least we've got the machine playing now. It'll rewind, it'll fast forward, and now it'll even load on its own. I've replaced the loading belt here. This loading belt has been replaced. The cassette housing belt has been replaced. And what I might do is get the uh, scrap, like a scrap cassette housing, and just to kind of show you... Um, how to replace the belt on this but it's pretty simple so now we've got it where it's playing it's rewind fast forward and now it will load a tape by itself I don't have to give it a helping hand so it's starting to get better the more it plays, the more it warms up, the better it is. It's getting a lot better as it plays and warms up. It's less and less. So that does tell me capacitor related. So I want to see if perhaps we can remedy that problem, but we'll probably do that in part three because part two, we got it going. Uh, we've got it loading on its own. We got it playing and everything. Uh, we have rewind, fast forward, we have picture search, everything that we need here is doing a really good job now. So, I don't have to do anything to help it load. And as you can see, the cassette housing is working really good. Like I said, spilt oil on the belt. What I did was took the belt back off, cleaned it with alcohol, with rubbing alcohol, then I put it back on. I also cleaned the um, pulleys with alcohol as well because there was some oil that gotten onto the pulley as well. Well, of course it got onto the pulley because it was on the belt and the belt wraps around the pulley, so it's going to get on the pulley as well. So, of course, you know, it's going to slip, right? If it's got oil on there but yes I was thinking that maybe the belt was just too thick and but that's not the case it actually was just the oil that I spilt so we got that going I'm pretty happy uh, so far I'm still 
you know, puzzled and wanting to fix the the servo issue, which we will do. second or two but. so let's get the uh, could, the uh, problem remedied with the servo so part three we're gonna take care of the drum servo but at least right now we've got a really good start on getting this thing to where it'll function a hundred percent because it is now doing all the functions it's playing rewind fast forward it loads okay unloads good mechanically it's in great shape mechanically it's 100 percent working it's got some electronic issues that we have to sort out and i'm not sure it could very well be the servo board but it could be the capacitors on the head drum motor circuit board and I've seen because I've seen those go bad and cause that type of a symptom so um, stay tuned for part three and we'll get to reset the counter stay tuned for part three because that's when we're gonna take care of the servo issues that this machine has now also I am wondering um, about a couple a couple other things that may need to be done like uh, putting some rubber renew on the pinch roller, uh, maybe cleaning the upper head drum, taking some of the shine off this upper head drum, and it could be that uh, because it just seems like it, it may be, the tape might be sticking to the drum just a little bit. But, uh, those things are some things I want to do to this too, so. But, at least for right now we've got, mechanically we've got it working 100%. So I'm very happy that we got that going. So, don't miss out and stay tuned for part three you remember i was talking about in the beginning that i may do this video repair video in two or three parts because i don't want to make these too long if i go more than 30 to 40 minutes people tend to lose interest in the video and they don't tend to watch the video all the way through so that's why i'm kind of like breaking it up into sections because I want to show the complete repair and have people see the whole video, not just, you know, parts of it or watching it for a little while, getting bored, and then not wanting to watch it. So thank you all for, you know, your, um, your kindness and for watching and for all of your wonderful uh, comments that you make uh, thanking me and that's this is one of the reasons why I do it is so I can help other people you know get their beta machines fixed or at least just help give you some knowledge to know how to fix these machines because I'll tell you what whether you're trying to repair the machine so you can play back your tapes to digitize tapes or you're watching these videos maybe so you can repair beta machines yourself and maybe sell them because let's face it there is a mark a small market for these beta machines um, there are people willing to pay a decent amount of money for these VCRs because they need them themselves because they have family videos that need to be transferred to a digital 
source and the only way to play back beta is to have a beta machine so and a third reason is we can keep these out of the landfill let's keep them out of the landfill and keep history alive because this is history you know and we're keeping it alive we're trying to get as many hours out of these machines as we possibly can um but so uh, i'm very glad that uh, i have this machine and like i said this is gonna go into my personal collection now i've had a, a few viewers ask me if i fix beta machines for other people yes i do um I charge $30 an hour labor plus parts and plus the cost to ship it back but it is well worth it to have a beta machine fixed by me or if you want to fix it yourself you know I mean these videos are for anybody that's interested in trying to get theirs going themselves and if you can't get it going and you need a little help from the Betamax man, I'm always going to be here to assist you in that way. So, like I said, my repair cost is $30 an hour, plus parts, plus the cost to ship it back. However, it usually doesn't take me more than about two to three hours to repair something, depending on what's wrong with it and so on and so forth so anyway um i hope that you guys enjoy these videos and i will try and keep more of these videos coming um there's a couple more machines that i'm wanting to get um that i want to get going i have a SLO 325 that I want to get going and because that machine is a industrial model and it will record in the original beta 1 so I have my SL 7200 which makes uh, beta 1 recordings for me but I would like to have that industrial one working that I have I have an SLO uh, 325 it will record in beta 1 and it will play all three speeds beta 1 2 and 3 it'll only record in beta 1 but it'll play the rest of the it'll play all three speeds so the SLO 4 or 325 SLO 325 is one that I would like to get going again so anyway guys I hope that uh, you like this video and uh, it may take me a while to get to your comments I'll try and answer comments within a couple of days sometimes it takes me a little longer um, as I'm extremely busy I can't always answer all the comments that come in um, but I do want you to know that you are a valued a viewer and uh, I value your uh, input so I'll try and answer as many comments as I can but like I said it may take me a while to answer comments okay we'll see you later this is the Betamax man signing off bye bye